angle edition postulate, which is similar to the segment edition postulate, except it's dealing with angles. So I can apply to the angle edition postulate to find the missing values of an angle. Just remember that this is an angle. That's the vertex. And an angle is made up of two rays. So an angle is made up of two rays. So remember, rays go on forever in one direction. If you're ever confused by anything I've wrote on your homework assignments, you know, we don't have much time in class, but come see me and I will help you. Just because you got it wrong doesn't mean I won't help you. Come and see me if you want to learn how, what you did wrong. I will help you out. All right, so... Name all of the angles with a vertex of B. Remember, angles are named with three capital letters, which are points. And they use the angle symbol in front, okay? So when you name an angle, that's how it happens. This stuff is not on your quiz tomorrow, just so you know, or what, Thursday, all right? So this stuff is not on your quiz on Thursday. So name all of the angles with vertex B. So Gabe, give me an angle with a vertex of B. G, B, A. The vertex always has to be the center. <coughs> Abby, give me another one. A, B, D. Like I said, different colors in geometry might be helpful. Katie, give me another one. G, B, E. So angle G, B, E. Carmichael, give me another one. What's the last one up there? So we've gotten this one, this one, and this one. What jingle have we missed? So C, D, H doesn't have a vertex of B. We want this vertex here. So how would we get that vertex with these three letters? So say... Good. Okay, do you guys notice that there's letters or numbers in the middle? You can use a number that's in the center of an angle if it is the only angle there. So, for example, A, B, D is also angle. Let me find that right color. And G, B, oh, no, not that one. G, B, E is also angle. So if there's a letter in the middle, or I mean a number, sorry. If there's a number in the middle, you can use that as well. So just another way to name the angles, all right? Name the sides of angle 5. So this is angle 5. So what are the rays that make up angle 5? So the sides are two rays. So what are the two rays that make up angle 5? Can somebody give me an array here that makes up angle 5? Helena, give me one. Ray, G, B. Ray, G, B. And you put the little arrow on top if you use that, or you can put Ray, G, B down. And Hayden, give me another one that makes what's the other side of angle 5? Ray, B, E. Ray, B, E. And that's not the only way you could name that one. That one could have been named as Ray BF as well, right? So, same thing. What is another name for angle 6? Give me another name for angle 6. What is another name for angle 6 here? 
Ian, what's another name for angle 6? B F H is like that. Do you see how my fingers followed that way? So you have to connect it. So we want angle 6, which is this. So you want your fingers to follow that angle. So what are the letters you can use? If this is angle 6. E, B, D. All right. So questions on naming angles before we continue on. When you're ready, go ahead and flip. If you are not ready, ask a question, please. Okay, in the angle addition postulates, if P is the in the interior, meaning between, in the middle of the angle, so inside the angle, of angle R, S, T, then the measure of angle R, S, T is equal to the sum of RSP, so I'm going to line that out here, so that's RSP right here, um, and PST. So I'm trying to use different colors to give you guys kind of like that idea of what I'm talking about. Does that make sense? Is that making it more visual about what I'm talking about by using different colors? If you have different colors, it might be helpful for you to do the same. So RST is the whole angle, just so you guys are aware. So if we were to do that, I'm going to do it on the outside. RST is that whole entire angle there. So what this is saying is if you add this angle plus this angle, it should equal the whole entire angle is what that's saying. It's basically saying if... if Helena has a piece of pie, and only Olivia has a piece of pie, and you put them together, right? You can add that together, and it adds, it's one big piece of pie. Oh, they use different colors here that I should have used. I should use the same colors they used. Here, let's do that real quick. Okay, I'm going to use green for that because they used green, just to make it better down there when they do it. So then that matches the actual colors they use. So angle RST, the measure of angle RST is equal to the measure of angle RSP plus the measure of angle PST. So because that is in the interior, that's allowed. Notice this M here. This means measure. And you use it whenever you are using an equation. only when you're writing equations, which means measure. You don't use that in any other situation when it comes to congruence or anything like that. Okay, an angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two angles that are congruent. So again, that piece of pie situation, if, if Jill and Casey are sharing a piece of pie and they want to make it even, they would bisect it, meaning they'd have two equivalent pieces of pie, right? So that's right here, YW, is like the knife that cuts the pie. So if it is an angle, if it is a bisector, if you see the word bisector, it cuts it into two equivalent pieces.
So x, y, z is cut into two equal pieces. So that's x, y, z. I'll use two different shades of grades. So this, so angle x, y, w is congruent to the angle z, y, w, meaning that those two are the same. So kind of like that problem that Lindsay asked about in the homework with the segment bisector, right? We talked about segment bisectors. A segment bisector bisects a segment into two equal pieces, and we can set those equal. An angle bisector cuts an angle into two equivalent pieces, and you can set those equal, all right? So addition postulate says you add them together to get the total. So you do this plus this equals that. In a bisector situation, you say, oh, those are congruent pieces, so I can set them equal. So knowing those situations is really helpful when you get to problems that you have to do. All right? So go ahead and get that copy down. And then we will get on to the next set of definitions here. Devin, are you okay? All right, types of angles. So acute angles are measures greater than zero or greater than zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees. So they're between zero and 90 degrees. A right angle measures at 90 degrees. Um, an obtuse angle measures greater than 90 degrees and less than 180. And a straight angle means that it's 180 degrees. A straight angle is also a line. Oops, I'm still on the highlighter mode. So a straight angle is just a line. So remember when we talked about that, like, two things that were supplementary yesterday when we were going over those problems? So supplementary angles, two supplementary angles make a straight angle. Okay, if you add two supplementary angles together. So I don't know. I'm going to add those words on here. So they don't say these words, but you might also hear these words, complementary is an angle that is 90 degrees. So, sorry, angles that add to 90 degrees. And supplementary means angles that add to 180 degrees. So just a few words that you might see when we talk about angles. When you are ready and you have that all written down, go to the example so I know you're ready, and then I will get started with all the examples with you guys, but I don't want to move on until we're ready. Does anybody have any questions about the types of angles? All right, so let's look at these examples together. It says find the measure of BAD. So BAD is the whole angle, right? You guys see that? We know to get BAD, so I'm just going to put angle BAD. I just put BAB. So the measure of angle BAD is equal to what two angles add it together. What angle can we add? What two angles can we add together? Logan? DAC and BAC. So DAC, measure of angle DAC, and you said BAC? Yes. Plus the measure of angle BAC.
So that means that the measure of angle BAD equals 24 plus 31. Now, granted, if this was a homework assignment, would you need to write down all these steps? No, but these are notes for you to reference back to when you guys are completely lost and have no clue what you're doing, all right? So that's why there's so much writing going on here. So the measure of angle BAD, I keep on doing D, B there, equals 55. And then you put the little degree symbol there because it's an angle measure. That's the unit. So it typically, we will tell you if things are called straight angles or not, just so you guys are aware. But if it looks like a straight line, assume it's a straight line, okay? Just so you guys are aware for the next example there. So for the next example, do you see that it wants you to find X, and the two points you have on there are along this angle here? Do you see how it's a straight line? What do we know about a straight angle? How many degrees is a straight angle? What? Devin? So the measure of EGH is 180 degrees, right? We know straight angles measure 180 degrees. And it is made up of two other angles. What are the angles that EGH is made up of? Biku, give me an angle that EGH is made up of. And? What's the other one? FGH, okay. I don't want to use blue again. That's not good. So the measure of angle EGH equals the measure of angle EGF plus the measure of angle FGH. You know which angles are to each one. Some of you guys might be able to see this without the colors, and that's completely fine. So we know that EGH is a straight angle, which means that it is how many degrees? 180. So what can we replace this with? 180. Rob, what would I put in place for the measure of angle EGF? What would I put there? What is... What is what is the measure of angle EGF according to this picture? In, inside the yellow, what is inside the yellow here? So we can take 2x minus 18 plus what is the measure of angle FGH? Daniel, what's the measure of angle FGH? So we can add those two together and it should equal 180 because those two angles together make a straight angle which means it's 180 degrees. Is it 33? Did, did I do that wrong? Can somebody confirm that that's 33? 6 goes into 19 three times with one remaining, so that's 18. So is that 33? Okay. And that's not a degree in this case because it is X. Yes, Lindsay? Yeah, are you understanding this stuff so far? Are you sure? Go ahead. Run quickly, please. What questions do you guys have so far? Please. This is new to you. This is different. Seeing pieces together is really hard. If I need to start... If I need to bring some magnets in and start putting them on my board to show you guys what is happening here, I will do it. Does that make sense? It's okay if you are confused. I wish I had like strips of magnets right now to help you guys out. Is anybody confused and need help? Are we doing okay? Please do not be quiet. I would like you guys to talk to me and help me, help me know what you need. Okay, given that the measure of angle PQR is 102 degrees, so PQR is 102 degrees, that whole entire angle is 102 degrees. 
So we know that is 102 degrees. Find the measure of angle SQR and the measure of angle PQS. So SQR and PQS is what we're looking for here. So somebody... You can use the variables and the numbers as if you want to. I'll rewrite stuff later in just a second here. But somebody set up the equation with the actual, like, expressions and stuff given to you. So with everything that you know there, somebody set up the equation for me. Who, who can do this? Desiree, help me out here. What are we going to be adding together? What will we add together if the whole is 102? So what two things do we have to add together? And it equals what? What did you say? Perfect. 7x minus 5 plus 9x plus 11 equals 102 degrees. So I'm going to highlight those in the different colors I used just so you can see where those came from. So those two, so the two colors make up the whole, right? You guys see that? Two pieces make the whole. Morgan, are you doing okay? So 7x and 9x is 16x plus 6 equals 102. So I subtract 6 on both sides. So 16x equals I'm sorry, 96. And then you divide by 16. And what do you get? You Six, okay. So x equals 6, but is that what it asks us to find? It asks us to find S, Q, R, and P, Q, S. So we now have to plug 6 back in. So the measure of angle S, Q, R equals 9x plus 11. So we know that x is 6, so we plug in 6. So that is 65 degrees. And the measure of angle PQS is 7x minus 5. So we plug in 6. And that's 42 minus 5, which is 38 degrees. That's not 102, though, is it? Would that be 37 degrees? That's 37 degrees. So if you add those together, they should be 102. So that's 12. Carry the 1. So 7 plus 3 is 102. So we're good there. Austin. Right? Okay. What do we know about, what does this symbol mean here? Do you know? 90 degrees. So this means that this thing is 90 degrees. So what is the equation we can set up if the whole is 90 degrees? Gabe, what is the equation I can set up if the whole is 90 degrees? Good. So knowing what those symbols means is important. It also tells you that EFG is 90 degrees, and you're going to find those two interior angles of EFH and HFG that make those up. But notice, this is a 90-degree symbol. What questions do you have on what I just did there? It's kind of like that straight angle situation we just did, right, where it was equal to 180. Some of these things won't directly tell you, like example C that did there, that is 102 degrees. You're going to have to understand that a straight line is 180 degrees and a uh, square, and it means it's 90 degrees. Okay, so those are some things you're going to just have to know. So that is 3x plus 3 equals 90. So 3x equals 87. And divide by 3. So x equals, goes in there twice, 27. Divided by 3 is 29. So 
So all I have to do to find the measure of angle EFG is we know the measure of angle EFG is 2x plus 2. So we do 2 times 29 plus 2. So that's 60 degrees. And the measure of angle HFG equals x plus 1. So that's 29 plus 1, which is 30 degrees. All right, what questions do you guys have on those ones? Go ahead and flip to the back page then. When you are ready. Katie. Thank you. So EFG, this right here should say EFH, right? So go back and fix that. Make sure it says EFH. Thank you. And then we will do the bisecting one, and then I have to get your homework out to you guys. All right. BD bisects angle ABC. What do you know if BD is bisecting angle ABC? What do you know? What did you say, Kylie? You said something in your breath. What does bi bisecting mean? Cutting it like in half or In half. And what do you know about those pieces that it's cutting? They're going to be equal. Cuts into equal pieces. So we need to find the measure of angle A, B, D, C, B, D, and the whole entire angle. So we know that it cuts it into equal pieces. That means that this angle is the same as this angle. That's what those lines mean. They're the same. When two things are the same in math, what can we do? Set them equal to each other. So Morgan, what would my equation look like then? Perfect. So knowing what these words mean is very important. Divide by negative 6. I get x is negative 8. Did anybody else get x to be negative 8? Okay. So the measure of angle A, B, D is negative 4x plus 33. That's negative 4 times negative 8 plus 33. 32 plus 33 is... 65 degrees. The measure of angle DBC equals 2x plus 81. So I do 2 times negative 8 plus 81. So that's negative 16 plus 81. Is that 65? Which makes sense. Should they be the same if they're bisected? Yep. And then what do we do to find the entire angle, the measure of angle ABC? What can we do? Add 65 plus 65, and we get 130. All right. Go ahead and finish copying that down.